Welcome back. I hope you're hydrated and refreshed because we got more hot topics to talk about. Uh, we're going to be talking about how big is Cyberpunk 2077? And I feel like, Boost, you may have some info on this one. Yeah. So there's somebody who works in QA uh, for Cyberpunk 2077. And they tweeted out something a couple of days ago, actually just over a week ago, essentially pointing out the fact that they've put in 175 hours into the game. And they said that that wasn't even them trying to 100% the game. Uh, they said they were just trying to go through the main quest line, apparently. Uh, and they were they put that amount of time into it. Uh, granted, it's been said that the game's main quest line would be shorter than that of The Witcher 3, um, but that's pretty insane, and apparently there's going to be a ton of side missions in Cyberpunk 2077, uh, and then Game Informer, who I'm reading an article from here, says that in their hands-on time with the game, it took them about four hours just to get to the beginning credits of what? Cyberpunk Wow. wow. No. Four hours. They said that some people were even reporting up to six hours to get through those opening credits. And that's just oh the God. starting point of that's the game. And I guess my overall question here, uh, obviously specifically to Cyberpunk 2077, what, how does everyone feel about something like that? But in general, do we think that games being like 50, 60, <laughs> 70 hours long should be seen as this like extraordinary, amazing, good thing? Because for me... I don't know what it is, but I'm starting to like. I'm getting it's exhausted. To turn me off from. Yeah, it. I'm yeah. getting you know? exhausted just thinking about. Yeah. What was it, 170 hours? 150. 175. Now, I, it, it's worth noting as well that this comes from this comes from somebody who is QA at, yeah. at Cyber on Cyber on Cyber. Right. And basically, what that means is they play the game to try yeah. and find every single tiny little issue with it. And so through that, there's probably a lot of stress testing that they're doing, really trying to push the limits of the game, trying to break it so that they yeah. can fix whatever bugs are there. So in that case, maybe that's where a lot of the hours come from. But yeah, 175 I, hours without really trying to finish the main story or without trying to 100% is crazy. I think of, okay, games, well, the game that like really broke me for a period, Persona 5. <laughs> that game, uh. I love it. It's beautiful. It's very stylistic. It's like one of the best games I've played ever, but it is so god dang long. Like it is mm -hmm. 100, I think 100 hours. Um, I was just looking it up to complete. And it, that that caused a huge issue with me because I think after the first fifth, well, maybe first 30, I was like, okay, I need a break. I'm just going to, I'm going to step away. Things start to get a little repetitive. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's too many palaces. I just can't do it anymore because it's the same story over and over again. I step away and I'm like, man, I wish there was a game like Persona 5. Oh crap. I never finished that game. Let me hop back in. I hop back in. I play another like 30 hours and I'm like, Wow, I'm exhausted again. I need to take another break. Mm -hmm. Like this becomes mm -hmm. a, tri a, a triathlon where like I'm just trying to get to the finish line and I just it just is not as like rewarding at the end because mm -hmm. it was such a long sure. journey. Now that I be like beat the game, I can look back and be like, "Haha, like I beat that game. That game's like the best <laughs> ever." Because I, I'm not going through the pain of working my way through it. So no, just because you're long, it doesn't make you a great game. Although it does depend on what the game's offering, right? Like, um, right. I believe, you know, with a game like Cyberpunk, it's this huge open world um, where you could really explore all these different like corners and like alleyways and like characters that live in this world. And they yeah. put so much work into that, that it will make it interesting to see, but not 170 hours. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. The game that broke me ironically was the Witcher three. Uh, I put in oh. <laughs> close, close to 200 hours just into the main game, not even going into like the DLC. And it felt like work at that point. But the only thing that I'll give CD Projekt Red credit for is that it was compelling all the way through. At mm. no point was I was like, oh man, I'm doing these fetch quests that don't really amount to anything. It's just repetitive. No, I was engaged the entire time around. Um, typically, if a studio came out and they're like, I'm going to give you a 170 hour game, that, that would be a huge turnoff for me. But the fact that it's CD Projekt Red and the fact that I know that they've been working nearly a decade on this game, yeah, I kind of want to just see it all the way through and 
and give them my time because I know that it's going to be quality. I know that it's going to be something I haven't played ever before. Um, another game that comes to mind is like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I put in a lot of time into that game too, yeah. over a hundred hours. But at the same time, like that is a game I've played before. I've played Assassin's Creed games many times before. At right. no point was I going through that game saying, man, I've never done this before. This is brand new to me. So mm -hmm. I, I give CD Projekt Red a little bit of credit here, uh, allowing them to make a game this big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to add on to uh, Camille's point, it, it is getting a little exhausting because I think the last, like, the last game that I think I fully fleshed out finish was Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. And I feel like... Mm. What, I, I'm thinking How about many... It. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time <laughs> out. Time out. Where have you been for all the Legend of Zelda games? <laughs> I, get close to, yo, I get close to finishing, but I never finish. And I think the thing is, is that because I feel like there is an emphasis nowadays with games where it's like the longer the game is, the better it is, the more replayability, all that stuff, right? But I feel like... I feel like a lot of uh, developers are missing out on the aspect that one of the best feelings of playing a game is actually finishing the game, <laughs> right? So I feel like the last time that I've actually finished a game is, is crazy. Like, I think the one that exhausted me we, uh, was Borderlands 3, I think. And then I think okay. I just got overwhelmed by, like, all the side quests, all, all these things. And it was just kind of getting hard to follow that I kind of just wanted it to finish at one point, right? And it's like... Um, so yeah, I do I, 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 I do understand. Like Cyberpunk is a great game. I feel like having the appeal of 167 hours should be something that No Man's Sky should have had, like from the get-go, right? But yeah. sure. mm. like for a game like Cyberpunk, I'm not too sure if that's really something you should be like putting on this like pedestal. Step like, yeah, yeah, yeah pedestal. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is why our game's so good, right? Because it depends on what you're doing during those Content. hours. Makes so, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that's a really interesting point. I know Caboose, you kind of put the I the question out there, but what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of games that I've definitely logged quite a bit of hours into. I mean, if we're talking single player experiences, like I put a good amount of time into Red Dead Redemption Two, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I guess I, I, it's hard to explain because there are instances like Red Dead Redemption Two where I am down to put a hundred hours into it. I'm down to do everything that game has to offer because i am compelled but i feel like when i just when i hear that somebody's put 175 hours into cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> and they haven't even like they're not even trying to 100 the game they're just trying to go through the main quest line you know they, or they're just they're just kind of playing along or when i hear that it's four to potentially six hours just to get to the opening credits it's like yeah. please <laughs> yeah like imagine please. your friend talks about cyberpunk and tells you like yo dude this game's sick it takes six hours to get to the credits and like the beginning yeah. opening scenes right and you're like uh do i really yeah. want to be doing that right yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it, it all depends on like when you're actually playing the game what it's like because some games when you're going through that six hours to get to the opening credits it can be enthralling it can be very engaging um but some games do just overstay their welcome um mm. like they I, no. I don't know I, you know no, what example no. Don't. perfectly encapsulates what i'm trying to talk about here it's death stranding <laughs> that is a game that completely overstays its welcome that game just doesn't know when to quit it doesn't no. know when to wrap things up no. it just keeps going it's um, really a mind okay he's a storyteller oh Let him yeah 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 it's <laughs> opening cutscene i'm watching a movie sitting there i haven't even played the game i'm watching this opening cutscene. <laughs> i finished playing the game and i'm watching another cutscene for two hours like i'm ready to be done with this um <laughs> like that's that's one of the best examples <laughs> i can bring oh up God, about I'm a game crying. that really that really sticks around too long you hurt me so much, Caboose. I am literally <laughs> crying now. You guys can see the tears. But I will give you this, okay, Caboose? When I talk to people who are kind of like, oh, I don't want to play Death Stranding. It's a walking sim. Like, it's so, you know, it looks so boring. I do mm -hmm. preference my sell to them. Like, I'm trying to sell the game to them by saying, stick in there for 10 hours, and it really, like, it's really oh. good. Right? Like and I un I understand like with what Paul was saying like would right. you like that's a bad right. way to sell a game. I, 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 
now I know what I was doing wrong. That this is what I was doing wrong to you, Caboose. I shouldn't went in saying just stick in there for ten hours. I should have sold you on no, the other. No, imagine side. telling someone <laughs> just play it for almost half a day, and then <laughs> it'll start getting good. Like imagine that being the sales pitch. Yeah, uh, there are some yeah. games that like like. Look at Spider Man. Spider Man Miles Morales is the perfect example of a game that doesn't want to stay overstay its welcome. It's like, let's right. give you this small, condensed, easy to digest story and let's get out of here when we're ready to wrap it up. You know, that mm -hmm. game's like six to seven hours long. And some people might deal you know, that. This is another thing, too, in the opposite side of the spectrum. When I see people complain about a game being a little bit shorter, it's like, trust me. A game like Spider-Man Miles Morales does not need to be 30 or 40 hours. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, at that point, you start to lose some of the nuance of the character development and some of the story beats that they are providing for you because 25 hours later, you're like, wait, what happened 13 hours ago in the story yeah. that I'm supposed yeah. to now be picking up on in this cutscene? You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 a game like that doesn't need to overstay its welcome. It just give you those seven hours, enjoyable seven hours, action packed, and then wrap things up when it's time to. And it's interesting because I remember when we did talk about Spider-Man, I kind of was on that that side where I was like, man, I just wish the game was longer. Like it, it feels like it needs to be longer. And I know this is exactly what Insomniac was doing. They know the fans want it to be longer so they could come out with another one. We could see Miles again, right. another title. Right. But as a, a person buying a game, I want it to be longer. And, you know, it, it doesn't have that price difference. So, like, Spider-Man Miles Morales is cheaper because it is a shorter game. But a lot of games don't have that price difference. So then you go into it thinking, like, you're going to get this fully fleshed 30 to 40 hour game or story and then you're only left with 15 hours and you paid, you know, 80 bucks for it. It's mm -hmm. like, what? what's the point at that? You know, like, what is the point? Now with 70, 175 hours, it's like, maybe I should be paying more. I have questions. Why yeah. am I not paying more? <laughs> how much did they pay Keanu Reeves? If there's 175 hours in this game, how much of Keanu Reeves am I going to see? You know, like, it, you, you, I think usually we gravitate to the hours spent with a game as the value of a game. Right. No, for sure. And I think when you look at a game like God of War, that game was only, what, 40 hours at most if you were I trying to five or something yeah yeah and i think that's like one of the best games we've seen this whole generation but it still costs the exact same as say red dead redemption 2 which was arguably still just as good but it was a longer game mm -hmm. um so i do think that there's a give and take there but i do agree that i think moving forward i would love to see developers come in and say i'm going to give you a hundred dollar game but it's going to be well worth your money mm -hmm. i would love to Let see that let me put it in this perspective. I could go watch, let's say like, you know, if if a film like The Irishman was in theaters, which I think it did, had like a little- It did, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh right? my God. So three, three plus hour movie. Let's say I went to go see that in theaters versus like a movie that was an hour and a half in theaters. I will pay the same price of admission for both movies. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. But yeah. when I go watch The Irishman, <laughs> I'll pay for a four hour nap. When I go watch an hour and a half movie, I'll pay to watch this easy to digest, yeah. fun, quick movie that wraps uh, up when it's time to, and that'll be money well spent for me. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, and in this, in this analogy, the Irishman is what, Death Stranding? Hey, yes. whoa, whoa, whoa. Back off. Uh, I'm just asking. Right. I'm just asking. I know that I agree. I'm just asking. Category. Don't go put that out to the universe. That ain't right. Norman Reedus isn't some old man trying to find his youth. Don't do that to him. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, like it comes back to this question. What do gamers value in a game? Like what, what, is, the, what is the value going into that $80 price tag, right? So for myself, it is that experience like that you would get out of God of War, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Miles Morales, Spider-Man PS4, um, The Last of Us Part 2. Like it's the for me because I love story. You're getting that. But Paul, I, you tapped out on Twilight Princess. I thought Twilight Princess's story was great. So for you, what is that value, especially because you are PC focused? 
Well, I think for me, this is just the way I personally play games, but all the games I've dumped hours and hours into are games that don't really have a storyline to begin with and kind of cap out after you finish 20 games, right? Like I write card games for squad, right? I play a bunch of card games. You finish a card game within 15 minutes and you get the full experience from start to end, right? I play games right. like Overwatch and Valorant that finish within the hour and then you get that full experience. And it's more of like you're getting better at the game, but you don't have to experience this whole um, campaign. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like uh, Caboose really touched on the point here. Like if instead, if I didn't get pitched, hey, six hours is going to get you to start the game. If I got pitched, hey, six hours is going to get you the game start to finish and it's going to be the best six hours of your life. I think that type of game would be when I start investing into like these type of like story based games. I need like I think, oh, I, I actually finished. What was that uh, story based game? That, it was a Telltale series. Um uh tales from the borderlands uh no, wolf was... among us was... among... Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Wolf among us wolf among us that was a great game i finished okay. that like yeah. within a week right and then like i got the story in I, I got the experience and that was like great so i feel like for me like quality and the uh, what's in the game is what i would need for players like me i guess and mm. you know what's interesting what's not in this game is multiplayer so really, what is this QA? Like, what are you doing to spend 175 yeah. hours? Cyberpunk's not multiplayer at all, huh? It's, there, it's not it's a part of it. Mm. So, so it's supposed yeah. to be getting a multiplayer, but it's it's not. So I, I'm really scared because this just, it kind of is hinting that it may drag on. Yeah, like, for it, sure. It, yeah. And, and I think uh, there's a there's a term term that gets tossed around in like the industry a lot is called dev math um which is like the the time frame of which a, like a developer says a game's gonna take to complete essentially um a lot of games like they'll come out and be like this is an 80 hour experience for a developer but for a gamer who's just like running through and doing their own thing those 80 hours could be cut down to like 50. so when i mm -hmm. see like 170 hours of a developer meticulously going in uh interacting with each character letting them do all their dialogue and everything. That's not how everyone plays. Uh, some people just go right. and have fun and whatever. So that it can equate to like maybe 70 hours or 40 hours. So I don't really take that. I, I kind of take it with a grain of salt at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm curious to see like when Cyberpunk comes out. Actually, who's picking it up? I'm picking it up. Right here. Uh, yeah. I'm probably getting it. I don't know when I'm going to play it though. Like I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it. I just don't know when I'm going to put the time into it. I'm not sure mm -hmm. when exactly that'll happen, but I'm going to play it. Paul, you're iffy about it. I'm lucky that I have uh, a brother that buys games like this. So I usually, <laughs> I'm, I usually get the full With experience like watching him. him doing it. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think I'll see how that goes first. <laughs> so we'll have to compare the three of us in Caboose. Whenever you get to the game, we'll have to compare our times in terms of how much hours we're spending with the game and if it's enjoyable when uh, yeah. the game releases because i think that'll mm. be interesting to see a game that's mm. like kind of had this story of like 175 hours of qa was able to spend in the game if that's actually worth the time um and the experience right